Mr. Jesus Ramirez. All right. From the Photoshop Training Channel. Dot com. Sure. Little plug for you. Thank you. You need it. I appreciate okay. it. <laughs> you have three minutes max, starting in three, two, one, go. All right, cool. We're going to merge uh, old school technology with brand new technology. We're going to talk about algorithms, AI, and a whole bunch of stuff. Here is this image that's great, but not as good as it could be. The colors don't look as, as good as I would want them to. Photoshop has this amazing feature with the curves adjustment layer that you um, simply click on the auto button, and it does its magic, and boom, it looks fantastic. No, it doesn't. Why? No, because doesn't. Adobe doesn't use the best algorithm for that. In my opinion, the best algorithm is hidden. If you hold the Alt key or the Option key on the Mac and click on Auto, you'll have different algorithms to choose what happens when the algorithm or when you click on Auto. In my opinion, uh, fine, dark, and light colors is the best option. Also check neutral midtones and check save as default. So every time you create a new curves adjustment layer, you can simply click on the auto button and it will do a better color correction. Super cool, right? Yeah. That's in one minute. That's in one. I got three things to show. Oh, you got three things I got to show. Three okay. Things to show, yeah. So now I'm going to copy that, and we're going to look at new technology here, AI stuff. I, you know, I hope the internet's good enough. I don't know, <laughs> so we'll see. But pray to the cloud. I'm praying to whoever I need to pray to. Um, <laughs> but I'm going to expand this canvas here, and I'm going to paste that image there. And maybe I want to create a composite where I have that background image and the photo that we just fixed, so I can select the rectangular marquee tool make a selection over the transparent pixels. I bet you're going to hold shift. I'm not. Oh, yeah, I guess I'm, I am going to hold shift. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm just going to hold shift and then make a selection over both images like so. And then under generative fill, just leave it blank. You don't need to type anything in. Photoshop should merge the two images together, I'm hoping. I don't know. <laughs> and we'll have an amazing composite. And we have a minute, so hopefully we can get to the third thing I wanted to show. We have uh -oh. to wait uh -oh. for that. Yeah, yeah uh -oh. we're, we're uh -oh. waiting for the cloud. Yeah, I'm waiting for the cloud. And there you go. It generated, um, it, it merged the two images with different variations. Also, if we wanted a different kind of fish back here, I don't have my mouse. Somebody hit my backpack. I was that was um, terrible. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can go into the quick mask mode, and I will, what's the fastest way I can do this? I guess I'll fill with, with black. And then I'll go into Edit and Fade. And I just, um, just want to get like a 40% or so intensity selection on there. He's using I'll a press quick mask Q. in case you're not familiar. Yep. I'll click on Generator Fill and type the word fish. The, the, the reason I did that was 20 seconds. so that I could um, generate something that's not going to be at full intensity. It should be at around 30 or 40% intensity, whatever the number is. But it should create the illusion that we have a fish deeper in the ocean. And we have 10 seconds for that to happen. And there it is. Boom. <laughs> Five seconds to spare, Mr. Ramirez. Yeah. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to our channel. And for thousands more how-to articles and tutorials, visit our website, creativepro.com, and become a member today. Thanks for learning with us.